Hello everybody, my name is Abono Wise Barry from the Quran Institute and today we're going to be learning about exact sequences. So what is an exact sequence? Well, it's basically a sequence of groups, usually abelian groups, which we learned about in another video. And between them, we have functions that map one group to the other. So f1 of g1 is equal to g2, and then f2 of g2 equals g3, and so on and so forth. Now, these can be in finite or infinite. So today, we're mostly going to talk about the short infinite sequences. Who the hell? Today, we're mostly going to be talking about the short version of these exact sequences. So, basically, what they are is given group 1 and then a function such that f1 of g1 is equal to g2, uh, then if we have f2 of g2 equals g3, what's special about an exact sequence? Well, any sequence can look like this, have this general form. But, but the cool thing about the exact sequence is that the kernel of F2 is equal to the image of F1. Those terms might be unfamiliar. So you can say that a kernel is kind of like the root of a function, i.e. what values does the function map to zero. So... Uh, the image of F1 can be thought about in a similar way. So the image of F, F1 is just kind of like the range. So what is the set of possible values uh, that the function will map to? So like, for example, if we had sine x, this would be the image of sine x would be the set of integers from minus 1 to 1 on that interval. And let's say the image of floor of x or the image of ceiling of x. No, this is not the quotient space notation, so might be the integers. So uh, what about the kernel? So, uh, the kernel of, let's say, x squared uh, plus 2x is equal to uh, simply two objects. So, it's the set of minus 2 and 0. So then what would be the kernel of something like the heavy side step uh no, not the heavy side step function. The floor of x. Well, it just everything from zero to one. So uh these are just simplified versions of the kernel and the image uh for just these functions. They can be generalized to pretty much any function between two groups. So today I'm mostly going to be talking about functions between the integers because that's easiest for me to visualize. So, what's an example of a short exact sequence? Well, the best example is using is using modulos. So specifically, let's take the set of integers z. So then, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to map them with a function f. So that function f is going to be multiplying everything by 2. Or you could say y equals 2x even. Now, normally that, that would just map the real number to the real numbers again. But for the integers, it maps them to the even numbers. So if you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 
etc. So this is the input, then the output of between the values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Only 2 gets picked, only 4 gets picked, only 6 gets picked, and so on. These guys, there is no input that maps to any of the odd numbers, which means that this is the set of the even numbers. And then, what we're going to do is we're going to use something known as the quotient function. So, essentially, what we get out here is just the integers mod 2. So, how is this an exact sequence in particular? Well, let's think about it. So, what's the image of multiplying by 2? Well, that's just all the even numbers. 2, 4, 6, 8, and going in the other direction, too. And then, what's the kernel of modding by 2? Oh, okay. All right. So then, what are all the zeros of mod 2? Well, it shouldn't be any secret that mod 2 either gives you 0 or 1, gives you 0 for all the integers divisible by 2, i.e. the even numbers, and 1 for all the odd numbers. So, this maps to 0 the entire image. So, that's an example of a short exact sequence. Now, a long exact sequence is just many short exact sequences spliced together in a line. Now, they have many applications in homomorphism, but I haven't learned that yet, so that's what we'll get to next time.